I'm going to simply appeal to the deep heart within you. It's that simple. The deepest of us. Because in my uh, investigation, in my inquiry, in my life, and working with the people that we work with, what I've discovered is that each one, each person, each individuation who's, who's incarnated into this strange, miraculous, terrifying, challenging existence knows something, can scent something. As Susan said, it's like the roomy, it's like the roomy scent of the fragrance of the garden. And there isn't one who doesn't know somewhere inside them what that is. And of course, the nature of our existence, the nature of, of, of where we find ourselves, the nature of conditioning, the nature of wounding, the nature of the habituation of the I-self, the small self, the ego-self, is such that that fragrance, that delicate fragrance that we may call unconditional love, for example, is lost to us, is all but lost to us in the great play of samsara, in the great play, the great leela that we find ourselves in. That fragrance is lost. Only, you know, the thing is, it's not lost. It's just kind of forgotten. In the busyness of things, in the distraction of things, in the desire of things, in the fixing of things, in the future orientation that we have, in the preoccupation with the past that we carry around, it's forgotten. Just, just gone. And then, you know, maybe the spiritual journey starts or the discomfort with, with things. There must be more to life than this. There must be more to me than this. How can I leave this fragmented kind of sense I have of myself? How can I move beyond the pain of, you know, my, my suffering? Who am I? Who am I really in this life? And so begins this, this ever unfolding journey of what we call spiritual seeking. But I think it's not even really spiritual seeking. It's just trying to return or, or discover something whole within ourselves that's lost, something unified within ourselves that is lost, forgotten, not lost. It's simple, not complex. So the ongoing and constant invitation and I'm sure that each uh, speaker you know each session has pointed to exactly the same thing in a slightly different way and I, and I hope that we can meet in this session on ever deeper levels I mean how deep can we go here? How deep are we? That's the question. How deep are we? And I found no limit to that depth. I found no landing place to that depth. Sort of through the many veils of 
perception, through the many veils of emotion, through the many veils of belief systems, through the many veils of the cultural sort of conditioning that absorbs us, that preoccupies us, through these things into a deeper chamber, through the belief systems into the heart, into this, I don't know what it's like for you, but this heart was encased in stone for years and a great protective mechanisms that I that I that I developed in order to protect the vulnerable self. A gallant, you know, kind of noble in its in its way that I that I built that kind of protective uh, mechanism thinking that somehow the world was dangerous or you know they were out to get me or I couldn't reveal who I really was all these unconscious kind of patterning that meant you know I, I sort of kept something at bay kept the world at bay which was only really keeping myself at bay and then all of that came undone all of that came undone and it went through the through my life experience which was you know pain wounding some trauma into hedonism into big trouble dysfunctional relationships the, a life built on need a life built on transaction all of that came started to come undone and i i met the deepest pain in the heart And it opened, something opened. And it didn't stop there. This is the thing. This is what I'm saying. It doesn't stop there. It goes deeper. It goes deeper than the heart. It goes into the very essence of us. Down into the mysterious, into the unknownness of who we really are. And I haven't got an answer for who we really are. I don't know who we really are. It would be arrogant of me to say who we really are. But by and by, to arrive at a, at a place of, you know, what I call union. A union. A union of body, this body, these emotions, these feelings that arise, to no longer feel like I have to hide or, you know, scuttle around somehow and navigate my way through the world. Beliefs, self-limiting beliefs, perpetuate a, a kind of suffering most of which, you know, let's face it, most of our beliefs aren't even our own. They're somehow inherited. Somehow they've arisen through the ancestry, the ancestral uh, wounding that, that follows us around through, through our life, inherited from parents who did the best they could and grandparents who were doing the best they could. But still there's this stream of, ancestral wounding that carries us around, to see through that, to be willing to unpack, unpack, unpack. The journey of undoing, the journey of undoing, not doing. And this is what I speak to, this is what this really is. And I don't, I don't come at those things from uh, I have developed a philosophy from it. I haven't got a philosophy. I haven't sort of built a, uh, actually haven't built a teaching or anything on it. It's just that I, I, in, the, in, in the undoing, there was something natural that arose. 
in the undoing, the, the divine revealed itself. In the undoing, there was a, there was a, a realization that I could actually be who I, who I am. Bare bones, nervousness, completely. You know the 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 um, authenticity that calls us. is profound. 